Crystal Palace are at Wembley. They've beaten Liverpool, whose dream of the double is destroyed in one of the most amazing matches, surely, in the recent history of the FA Cup. And the Palace supporters celebrate one of the most unexpected and dramatic victories that I can remember happening. Koppel was actually one of my heroes when I was a child. No nonsense winger. He was a tricky, fast player. Very direct, got the ball, drove at the defender. It was incredibly sad to see his career cut, cut short, but obviously we were the beneficiaries of that. Ron Nodes was never a football chairman, in my opinion, he was a football person. To spot the potential in Steve Koppel was really quite incredible, and one of his probably is his masterstroke. An intelligent guy who played for England, 28, wanted to be a manager. I think it'd been a hard decision for him. Steve Koppel coming was a catalyst for the club to start climbing. He, t he told me he was, he was just honest, he said, I'm learning as I go along, it's all new to me. He had a great level of communication and a great uh, common sense. I think he understood the things that we were interested in. It wasn't a hierarchy, it wasn't this guy you were afraid of. He just kind of crossed those uh, boundaries seamlessly. In training he was still the best player when he played in the five sides. I don't know what was wrong with his knee. I think it must have been a spoof all along. I think he just thought, I've had enough, I might as well be a manager now. Andy Gray from Corinthian Casuals from non-league. Then there was Jeff Thomas, John Pemberton, Alan Pardew came in again from non-league. Well, of course, Mark Bright and Ian Wright, obviously with a focal point of the team. Steve was instrumental really in, in the team and the team within a team as the players used to say for a laugh. And all the pieces sort of fell into place really. And, but most of all, there was a belief. Pardew on side. Bit of space for him. Hit by the outside of the boot. Right. Yes. Two nil. About three minutes left as McGoldrick turns it in. That's made it sure now. It was a defining moment for the football club and for him as a manager as well. Intercepting. Rush going to the left now. Onside. Ian Rush. Liverpool take the lead, and Ian Rush, the ace goal scorer, once again makes it. First 45 didn't have a kick, and part of the game plan was just to make sure that we, we were in touching distance. There was an incredible calmness and a, an incredible belief about Steve. We didn't panic, we didn't go to plan B, and that, that was really off, you know, that all came from Steve. We came out that second half, and John Pemberton's run, it, you know, and the rest is history. John Pemberton, a lovely run early on. And a shot for Barber, and Venison, and it's a shot, and it's there by Bright. It's Mark Bright, straight from the kickoff. Thorne picked it on, and it's gone in. Cardew! I think he expected to win if we played well. And he said, a small group of die-hard fans who, who believe we can win. Everyone else hopes we can win, and everyone else thinks we've got no chance. I mean, when we walked out in the 1990 Cup final behind Steve Coppel, uh, it was a dream come true for everyone because I think everyone owed so much to Steve. The blues, the noise, it was everything you dreamt of it being. And to be walking out there in front of 90,000 people at Wembley in the FA Cup final against so arguably the biggest team in the world, Man United, was, was a dream come true and we're all pinching ourselves and, you know, Steve made that happen. Promotion. FA Cup final and then finishing third in the old first division, winning the Zenith Data. He's an absolute legend and, you know, he's a one-off and uh, it, it, we're so privileged to have had him. Had Steve not brought me to Palace, I probably wouldn't have had the career I would have had. The bottom line is that Steve took a team to third place in an era when the top team dominated. He had a huge influence on my career and many other people, and not just as a football player, 
as a person as well. Malcolm Allison, amazing manager. Terry Venables, one of the best managers this country's ever produced. And yet above them all is Steve.